In the past, we've discussed the general idea of a quantum circuit, but this was done for a limited subset of possible operations. Let's now take a look at the general definition of a single qubit quantum gate, which is represented by what is known as a unitary matrix. The only single qubit operations we've seen so far have been the X gate, which flips our qubit from zero to one and back, and the Hadamard gate, which for example takes qubit zero to state plus and qubit one to state minus and vice versa. These two gates are examples of what are known as unitary operations. And a unitary operation is described by a matrix U that has the following property, and that is that when we multiply U with this conjugate transpose, that gives us the identity. Another way to represent this is by saying that the inverse of our matrix U is equal to its conjugate transpose. And in the case of a single qubit, here's what we mean by conjugate transpose. So if we have a matrix with elements u0, 0, 0 u0, 1, u1, 0, u1, 1, the conjugate transpose of this matrix is found by, well, taking the transpose of that matrix, which then will leave the diagonal elements alone, but it will flip the off-diagonal terms. So we get u1, 0 here and u0, 1 here and then taking the complex conjugate of each of its elements. And the reason why these matrices have to be this way is because what we want out of these operations is for them to be first norm preserving. So what we mean by this is that if we have a normalized state vector, if we evolve it through one of these unitaries, we want the resulting state vector to still be normalized. And also because we want this to represent physical operations, that according to quantum physics are reversible. Now, since these unitary matrices can take any state vector in our Hilbert space and evolve it into any other state vector, there's an infinite number of possible unitary matrices. So what I wanna do next is just focus on some of the most common operations that are used to construct interesting circuits. So let's first look into what are known as the poly matrices, which are composed of the X matrix, which we're already very familiar with, the Y matrix, and the Z matrix. And a way to interpret these operations are as 180 degree rotations of a state in the block sphere about the axis that they represent. So for example, an X gate will rotate by 180 degrees let's say state zero to state one about the x-axis. So as we know, the x gate takes state zero to state one and state one to state zero. Now the z gate does something similar, but with the plus and minus states. So it takes state plus to state minus because this is like a 180 degree rotation about the z-axis and state minus the state plus. Now the Y matrix is a rotation about the Y axis. So if we take state zero, it will still take us to state one. It would just add a global phase of I. Now another interesting set of gates are the phase gates. So phase gates are operations that add a relative phase, which corresponds to a certain rotation about the Z axis. So the most general of these gates is just called the phase gate, which is parameterized by an angle phi, and it's of the form one zero zero e i phi. And from this matrix, we can see that if we were to apply this to, for example, state plus, so let's take this matrix and multiply it by state one over root two, one, one, what we get is the superposition state one over root two, one, and then E I phi, or expressed in a different way, we get one over root two, zero plus E I phi one. So basically what this gate has done is add this relative phase of phi to a state that started in just an equal superposition of zero and one. Now there are a few common phase gates for which phi has a definite angle. So for example, the Z gate, which we describe above, 
is one of these phase gates. So we had that this corresponds to a matrix 1, 0, 0, minus 1. But this can also be written as 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi. So this is like adding a phase of pi to our state, right? Because this takes state plus to state minus. So it's adding a phase of minus 1 or a phase of actually pi. We also have ds gate, which is of the form 1, 0, 0, i, or 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi over 2. So it adds a phase of pi over 2. And then lastly, we have the t gate, which is of the form 1, 0, 0, 1 plus i over root 2, or also 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi over 4. So it adds a phase of, of pi over 4 to the equal superposition state. And this, then lastly, we have this general rotation gates, which are basically gates that rotate about a certain axis, but by some given angle. So for example, we said that the X gate rotates about the X axis by 180 degrees. Well, we can also have what is known as the RX gate that is parameterized by the angle theta that is equal to cosine of theta over two cosine theta over two, and then we have minus i sine theta over two, and minus i sine theta over two. We have the ry gate, also parameterized by theta, which is very similar to the rx gate, but where this off diagonal terms are actually just sine and minus sine here. And lastly, we have the rz gate, which is given by e to the minus i phi over 2 and e to the i phi over 2, which this is actually identical to the phase gate if we multiply it by a global phase of e to the minus i phi over 2. So now let's go ahead and use Qiskit to visualize all these different gates a little better. So let's start by just importing a quantum circuit class state vector and operator classes and defining a state vector for state zero and state plus. And let's start with a simple example where we just create a circuit with an X gate. And if we draw that, we see that here. And if we first take our ket zero and visualize it in the block sphere, we see that we have a vector pointing in the plus Z direction. And if we now evolve this state vector through our quantum circuit, well, this is going to take us to state one because it's going to rotate about the x-axis by 180 degrees. And if we observe that again in the block sphere, we see that that's in fact the case. Now we can do the same thing, but now for a circuit with a Z gate, which as we discussed, will rotate by 180 degrees about the Z axis. So let's now display our state plus. And if we apply to that same state, our quantum circuit, which has a Z gate, well, the expectation is that this is going to rotate by 180 degrees and we're going to end up at state minus. And let's draw that to make sure that's the case. And effectively, we get what we were expecting. Now, if we were to rotate state zero using a Y gate, we know that we're going to end up a state one with a global phase. We could do that. So let's create a quantum circuit again with just a Y gate. Draw that and let's take ket zero and just evolve it through this quantum circuit. And let's go ahead and just draw it there. And it, it should still show that it's state one. And effectively, we have state one. And uh, if we were to just display the state vector, what we're going to see is that it has a global phase of i. So that's exactly what we get. And if we were to evolve state 1, we should see that it's evolving to state 0 with a phase of minus i. Now let's look at some of the phase gates. So let's create a quantum circuit where we apply an S gate, which, as we said, should rotate only by 90 degrees or an angle of pi. So let's draw that. And let's make sure that we're instantiating a circuit with one qubit. And again, let's take ket plus, evolve it through that quantum circuit. And let's draw it in the block sphere. And that should take us to state right, which is pointing in the plus y direction. 
and effectively that's what we get so let's look at the corresponding state vector it should be 1 over root 2 0 plus i over root 2 1 and that's what we see here and we can do the same thing for let's say a t gate which now should rotate state plus only by an angle of pi over 4 so let's draw that in the block sphere and here we have it it's only rotating by 45 degrees now we can do the same for the general rotation gate so let's use an rx gate but here we need to pass not only the qubit that we want to rotate but also an angle so let's go up here and let's actually also import numpy and let's specify an rx gate with an angle of let's say pi over 2 applied to qubit 0 and if we start with state zero, so let's display that again. If we're rotating only by pi over two about the x-axis, we should end up pointing in the minus y direction, which is state left, which should be a superposition of one over two minus i over root two. So let's see if that's what we get. So let's evolve this k zero through our quantum circuit and draw it in the block sphere. So that's what we see. And then if we display the state vector we see we get 1 over 2 minus i over root 2 and again we can do the same with an ry gate this should take us to state plus and effectively we get state plus let's draw it in the block sphere and we can also do this with the rz gate well that's going to rotate by by an angle of pi over 2 about the z axis so let's do that on ket plus which effectively shows a rotation of pi over two. So that's it for this video. I hope this presentation of all the different gates was helpful. But as always, if you have any questions, make sure to post in the comments below. Thank you and hope to see you in the next video.